Knowing the power of his resurrection, let's uh, take a look at some scriptures here, and um, we're going to start in Philippians in chapter 3, and um, Philippians 3 is a uh, pretty much a testimony of the Apostle Paul. Uh, <coughs> Paul is, uh, is a man who... Uh, was used by God in a, in a mighty way. And this is a man who was very well educated. He was very committed. And at one point, he was very wrong. And I want you to understand that there is something the Bible teaches. It's called sincerity is no substitute for truth. And it's very th important that we understand that. Because sometimes we think, well, there, you know, people are sincere or they have, they mean well. Uh, but... The Bible says it's the truth that makes us free. It's not sincerity. It's good to be sincere. But we need to be sincere about what is true and right. Okay. I did have breakfast. <laughs> All right. So uh, Philippians chapter 3, Paul is, is given a testimony here. And he says... Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable to his death, thank you, uh, if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of Christ. Now the Apostle Paul here, as he... As he um, as he speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ, I think it's very important that we understand something about his speaking here. The, the Apostle Paul is not speaking about an idea. He's not speaking about a historical figure. He's not speaking about history at all. The Apostle Paul is talking about a person. He, he's talking about a person that he knows and that he wants to know better. He's talking about a person that is real in his life. And, and, and this is, the, when we're talking about the resurrected Christ, we need to understand that the, the disciples, the apostles, the early believers did not speak of Jesus as someone who was, but as someone who is. This is the reality of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we... we we have a song we sing quite often. Um, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. And, and, and this is the power of the testimony of these early believers. They weren't talking about certain facts. They were, they were talking about an individual. Someone who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Not somebody who, you know, he did something in the past. It's something that, that he did something, but he is still alive and he is still at work. And this is the witness they have. And I want you to think about this for a moment. That there should be no difference in the testimony of the believer today. Because Jesus Christ is alive today. He is not a person of the past. He's a person of the present. And, and the, the, the testimony here of Paul and the, the, the direction that his life is headed is pursuit of this living God, this Savior, this Lord. He says, I count everything else but dung so that I may know Christ. The, the, the power of his resurrection. This is a great witness of, of Ephesians 1 and 2. Uh, the, the declaration of the power of God in raising up his son from the dead. Now, 
we think of, of, of death as being pretty powerful, don't we? we? We have, man has no ability to undo death. And we, we work really hard at it, don't we? We're working really hard at not just growing old, much less dying. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're working hard against it. But, it, but it's coming on. And when, it, it, and when we have a funeral, um, it's, there's a finality about it. There's, there's, we, we commit the body to the earth from whence it came. And without the resurrection of Christ, and without the power of God, there would be no hope for any future for all of us. Because that's how powerful death is. And Satan used it over and over and over and over for a long time to hold people into bondage. You know, that's what religion does. It holds people into bondage. The fear of death. Somebody says, I can keep you from that. Only the Lord Jesus can do that. I want to know him, the Apostle Paul says. I, this is not talking about, I want to know about him. He says, I want to know him. And the knowledge that we have of the Lord Jesus Christ is not only the, the strength and the, and the grace we need to live life and to be victorious in this life, but it is the power of our witness. It is the life of our witness that, that we are servants of a living Savior. And when Paul talks about attaining to the resurrection of the dead, he's talking about that life where the resurrected Christ is manifest in him so that people see it. <laughs> Isn't that something that, you know, we, we think of uh, the, the, the amazing packaging, God's in, incarnation, uh, the, the, the creator becoming a man. And we think, how, how could God package himself in a body like we live in. And yet God did that. Jesus emptied himself of certain attributes and, and, um, and, and moved into a body and lived there for 30 some odd years and uh, walked this earth just like we, without sin. He did that so that he could die. How could God die? As the eternal God can't die, but the God-man could die. And the wages of sin is death, and so Jesus took the sins of all the world upon him as he hung there on the cross and he died. And, uh, and that death was once for all. It was enough. And then Jesus rose again the third day. Now, when we trust the Lord Jesus that he did that for us, the Bible says by his spirit he moves inside of us. And as Jesus indwelt a body of flesh, he indwells a body or many bodies today, the body of Christ, the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's our job, it's our privilege to represent him in the world today and that others might know him through us. Now the resurrection of Jesus Christ, yes, this is a, Sunday school lesson that, that we learn right away, don't we? I mean, this is one of the first things you learn. And, um, and it's of, of primary importance. You know, everything, is, as we saw with the children, he spoke from the beginning saying, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. Um, he spoke over and over and over, I've got to go to Jerusalem and I'll be... Uh, shamefully treated and then I will die and but the third day I'll rise again. He said this over and over and over again. There shouldn't have been many misunderstood standing, should there? You wonder how come what is this? It's like they don't they don't hear, they don't understand. They they you know um, what we do is we 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 put God in our box. We say, God, you know, you're gonna this is, this is reasonable to me. This is how you should handle the world. And this is how you should handle my life. And this is, I, this, if you behave this way, I can understand. And so we want God to act the way, in, in that way, so that, that uh, he is a God after our own creation, really. But God is not. He's the creator. Uh, we're the creature. And, and he behaves in, the, in ways that are higher than our ways. His thoughts are are above our thoughts. 
And, and the death, the burial, and the resurrection, none of us would have made that sort of deal, would we? None of us would. We would have. But that was the way. Uh, in his humanity, Jesus pleaded, if there's another way, take this cup from me. And he said, well, no, not my will, but yours, Father. And the will of the Father meant for him to become sin, for him to die, for him to be buried, for him to rise again the third day. And that is the message of salvation. It was, uh, if you take this away, then we have nothing. We wouldn't even be hearing about Jesus Christ. Do you, you recognize that there were many who came along saying, I'm the Christ? Jesus said, hey, watch out. There are others who are coming. They're going to say, I'm the Christ. This, this has happened over and over and over again. Some of you realize in our own country, in our own lifetime, we've had people who claim to be the Christ, the Messiah. And, and some of them are dead. And, you know, after a few years, uh, no one will remember them anymore. But see, the life of Jesus Christ is different, isn't it? I mean, this, of all the people who walk the face of the earth, there is no one who has had the impact on the world like this person. And so it's not, I mean, we've, we have to confront that. Why is this person, who, who never was more than a couple hundred miles from his home, uh, he walked where he went. I mean, he lived a very simple life. We don't have a, a list of, a, of, a, of accomplishment, political feats. We don't have, uh, he didn't have money. Uh, there were, I mean, <clears throat> how could this man have such an impact on the world we live in 2,000 years later? And here we are, people all over the world are gathering together because of this man. Here we are in this place together because of this man. And, and, and we, we, have to be conf we have to confront these facts. The fact is, if Jesus had not risen from the dead, none of that would be true. He staked his whole ministry on this. I'll rise again. I'll rise again. I'm coming back. I'll rise again. I'll die, but three days later, I'll be back. Who else could do that? Nobody. Nobody else could do that. And, uh, and it just poured in. You know, the, the Wednesday night, we had our Passion Week service. And you know... Jesus said, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. And as we got closer and closer to the death of Jesus Christ, the room got darker and darker and darker. And he died. And it was dark. It was. Can you imagine how dark it was? And the disciples, their mood and their, 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 they were without, their hope had been snatched from them. That's where it would have ended. That's why the, the Jewish leaders said, hey, we, we, they might steal the body. They might, uh, they might start some rumor that he's alive. Let's just nip this in the bud here. You know, he's dead. He's buried. His body decays. And that's the end of it. A year or two, nobody will even think about this Jesus. And that would be the reality of it. But <laughs> you imagine, man... Man put soldiers at a tomb and said, we'll keep him in there. How ridiculous is that? The Bible talks about Christ coming back again. And he's coming back in glory and power. And you know what the Bible says? It says men, nations are going to gather together and they're going to fight against that one coming back. Imagine how silly that is. It's silly. The tomb could not keep him. You know, and, and it is, it's well said that the, the angel rolled away the stone. Not so that, if you read the stories, not so Jesus could come out. And so everybody else could go in and say, hey, he's not here. He's not here. He didn't need an open tomb to leave. And, uh, wow. The scripture says, you will not allow your Holy One to, to see corruption. This is God's promise. This is the word of the Lord. 
He was declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection of the dead. This is not something that was done in secret. I mean, I mean, this changed the world. I'm talking about uh, a little bit this morning, some of the things I was reading about how that <clears throat> academia is changing. Yeah, academia, <coughs> you know, that study ancient writings and everything, they, they, they have... Um, they, they have rules they follow. They have uh, things <coughs> um, th- that they've deci- decided this makes an ancient manuscript reliable. Um, you know, w- this gives it credibility. And it has nothing to do with faith. It just has to do with academics. And, and how in the last 40 years, be- because of the witness of Scripture uh, these skeptics now, haven't become Christians, but they acknowledge that the, the early believers, the, the early Christians, they believe that Jesus bodily rose from the dead. Uh, that's the, the total, um, there's no way of arguing against that fact. In fact, some of the skeptics said, oh, I don't, can't explain or anything, but the history says Jesus rose again from the dead. All right, now that's sad to come to that conclusion, to know that as a historical fact and not know what to do with it. What do you do with it? I mean, this, this, if we think about it, well, that's a really amazing thing. Jesus rose from the dead, and then we go off and, 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 and head to the restaurant. And, you know, boy, I hope I get a chance to go fishing today. Now, this changes everything. It, nothing is the same because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And, and what's really important is that we understand this. The world is different. And that's a, that's a neat thing. You know, that's really neat. The world is different because Jesus came, he died, he rose again. But, but, but what really matters, I mean this sincerely, what really matters is your life. Uh, it's you. Is your life different because this Jewish carpenter went to a cross, died for your sins, was buried, and three days later came back to life bodily, never to be under death's dominion again? What does that mean in your life today? Now this, this, is, this is so important, and I think this is something that that uh, we, we just have to confront ourselves with this reality because, you know, look at, look at what the believers of the first century did. You say, well, boy, they were really special, weren't they? They weren't any different than you or I am. They were, they were just people and somebody brought them a message and when this message was brought to them, it was the, the gospel, which we have today, but was presented by somebody who said, He is risen from the dead. I saw it. I witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they said, well, you know, I think they did see it because they're, they're uh, pretty convincing here. It's, look at it. It's changed their whole lives. Do you, do you know there is no reason why that can't be true about you and me today? What, 2,000 years, what difference does that make? It doesn't make any difference. You are a witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Is, it, is there a witness here? Do I have a witness over here? Do I have a witness? Is Jesus Christ risen? Do you know it over here? All right, that's enough to turn the world upside down, to change everything. But see, you got to let it start with you. Just let that work around. Let that flip you upside down, inside out. And then it's going to do, do just like it did then. This world's dying. This world is so, it's just... Slipping into darkness. And, and we have the light. You know? Oh, it was so dark. 
But the light, open up that tomb, let's see. The light of the world is Jesus. And he's alive. He's alive. He died. He was buried. He rose again. He was seen. That's the gospel. And we are to be witnesses of that truth. You know, I learned in Sunday school that Jesus rose from the dead. That's so powerful. But Paul said, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. That was powerful. That was the power of a man's life. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ, the living Christ, lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Wow. You know, Christian, I, I'm so glad that we're all here. I'm so glad we had a, a sunrise service and we have this and we talk about Jesus and the rising from the dead. It's, it should be something that is a daily reality in our lives. <coughs> And, and I'm convicted about this. You know, uh, Lord, I wish I loved you more. I know if I loved you more, I would speak about you to others more. I'm sorry I don't love you like I ought to love you. Thank you for loving me unconditionally. Help me. Give me the boldness, Lord, to let people know that I serve a risen Savior. Let's bow in prayer.